guys, I want you to sit down with a good drink because Intel has announced a bunch of brand new processors and they're codenamed Whiskey Lake. Now you don't have to pour yourself a glass of booze and take a shot every time when I say whiskey. Uh, so just sit back and relax. Uh, and this video is definitely gonna be a lot more informative for you, especially if you're in the market for a back to school PC. Uh, so the new Whiskey Lake CPUs are particularly geared towards the mobile uh, notebook space. Uh, and what these new CPUs can bring to the table could just potentially take the notebook technology just one step uh, into the future. It's, it's a small step, but nonetheless, uh, let's get into the details. Now, I wanted to make this video to give you guys a rough idea of where these current Whiskey Lake CPUs land in current Intel's lineup and make sure you understand what exactly you're looking for because if you thought that notebook or purchasing a notebook was confusing before, well, it's gonna get even worse because uh, Intel will be offering more than 20 different processors at the same time. Uh, and I think that's just a bit ridiculous. And I'm not kidding. So let's start things off by talking about where Whiskey Lake fits into the larger uh, notebook product stack so that you guys can get a sense of what we're dealing with. And remember, every one of these new processors are considered to be eight generation and are based off Intel's original 14 nanometer Skylake micro architecture. A few months ago, we covered Intel's high-end Coffee Lake mobile processors that were replacing most of the seventh generation KB Lake CPUs. Basically, these consisted of 12, 8, and 4 threaded products for higher end and slightly thicker notebooks that favored performance over all day battery life. They all had TDPs ranging from 25 watts to 45 watts uh, and used Intel's latest generation architecture. Basically, processors based on Coffee Lake promised better overall performance in multi threaded workloads and higher clock speeds than KB Lake. We actually saw that with the, our launch day coverage on desktop parts as well. These processors were used in gaming laptops like the Eurocom Q5 and the Gigabyte Aero 15X we looked at a while back. And in those cases, a Coffee Lake mobile CPU was paired up with a high-end discrete graphics card to provide an awesome gaming and creativity platform. I actually still use my Gigabyte Aero 15X for trips like CES and Computex because uh, with that Intel CPU paired with the uh, discrete graphics card, for in this case, it's the GTX 1070 Max-Q, uh, you're looking at an awesome mobile powerhouse. And with the recent update to Adobe Premiere taking advantage of hardware acceleration, uh, it really renders videos just as fast, in fact, faster uh, than some of the desktop systems um, that I've encountered in the past. All right, so here's where things get a little bit more confusing. Uh, in the last year, Intel also released a range of lower processors for thin and light notebooks with the KB Lake R architecture. The R here stands for refresh. So while there are some improvements over the original discontinued KB Lake chips, the broader revisions in Coffee Lake haven't made their way into these CPUs. From a microarchitectural standpoint, think of KB Lake R as a bridge between KB Lake and Coffee Lake. It's not really one or the other. All of these processors from the i7 all the way down to the i3 are carried uh, with the Core U branding, which means they use a lower voltage to improve battery life and lower temperatures. That also means giving users much less performance than Coffee Lake based Core H CPUs, but in ultra light notebooks like the LG Gram. So portability is more important than record benchmark numbers. I also can't forget to mention the Core G series, which includes higher wattage quad core eight threaded CPUs alongside AMD Vega graphics, but those products are beyond the scope for this video since they're mostly focused on other non-notebook markets. Now at this point though, you can actually start to see where problems and mistaken identities start because there are a whole lot of processors on this page already. While the Core H lineup is pretty defined with CPUs that have 45 watt TDPs and offer some impressive stats, there is a Core U series here as well. Uh, though unlike the KB Lake R parts, they still have a TDP of 28 watts and use Intel's upgraded Iris Plus integrated graphics. All of that, and they still use very, very similar names. For example, the i7-8550U is a four core, eight threaded KB Lake R CPU with a TDP of just 15 watts. Meanwhile, the i7-8559U also has eight threads, but is a very different animal. The only way someone can tell a difference is one, by the single number. And trust me, you guys aren't the only ones going a bit crazy with all of this, uh, but there's a good reason why I've taken all this time to explain what looks like Intel's homemade version of an alphabet soup. That's because Intel's gonna be parachuting Whiskey Lake processors right smack into their KB Lake R Core U product stack. Now, before you ask, 
No, they aren't planning to replace any of the existing CPUs with Whiskey Lake. That's mostly because uh, they are yet another evolution of KB Lake with some additional features rather uh, than based off Coffee Lake enhancements. Let's zoom into these sort of new CPUs to see what's up. There will be three new processors here and their baseline capabilities are actually rather impressive. By using yet another refinement to their 14 nanometer manufacturing process, Intel has been able to increase boost clocks by a pretty big amount in some cases. Supposedly, performance is up versus KB Lake CPUs by about 10%, which has happened without associated loss in efficiency or heat output. Other than that, baseline specifications are pretty much identical, but there are some interesting things going on behind the scenes. The more interesting addition, in my opinion, is the long-awaited replacement for Intel's original KB Lake Core Y series. These are ultra low wattage CPUs that have two cores along with four threads while boasting an insanely low TDP of just five watts. Expect to see these in convertible tablets uh, and other similar devices that need a huge battery life but don't have the space or cooling necessary for the 15 watt U series. Now, according to the information that Intel has sent us, Whiskey Lake processors are optimized for connectivity. And yeah, I know that sounds like a pretty broad marketing term uh, that's all fluff and won't have any meaning in real life, but there are a few things that could change that opinion. Perhaps the most important inclusion is a suite of new power optimizing features that should lead to better battery life than KB Lake R. Intel claims some of these systems will run for more than 16 hours while playing local 1080p video, but I'll need to test that for myself before taking it as a reality. Much of Whiskey Lake's evolution takes place within its platform controller hub, or PCH. Intel is taking a page from their Gemini Lake playbook by including uh, a CNVI integrated connectivity module called Pulsar uh, into the PCH. This allows for integrated 160 megahertz gigabit Wi-Fi compatibility. There's also a new ultra low power quad core audio DSP for broader compatibility with voice control digital assistants like Microsoft Cortana and Amazon Alexa. For example, with integrated Cortana and Alexa support, you can now be on the road working on a presentation and without missing a beat, verbally ask Alexa what the status of your home alarm system is. That DSP is so low powering so it can always stay on when your system is hibernating. Uh, you can then have the system wake up by just talking to it. And yes, I know that sounds a bit weird, but I know I'm sure there will be other uses uh, for this feature as well. Uh, there are a few repeats here too. Thunderbolt 3 isn't directly integrated into the PCH and notebook manufacturers will need to add an expensive Alpine Ridge chipset for compatibility. Of course, Optane support makes a comeback too, and while we couldn't find great uses for it on the desktop platform, this technology will come in handy for notebook users. So how will users be able to determine whether or not if a notebook that they buy would feature one of these new processors? Well. Intel's actually hoping to kick off a customer education campaign uh, in September and October, and I have no idea what that means and what are the details, but it looks like there is or there has to be a lot more information for customers to um, digest because my brain certainly had a lot of time and a tough time just processing all of these new information. Uh, but I guess, I, and I hope this video sort of uh, eased that out, hopefully. Intel's partners are also supposed to add this logo to their packaging and other materials. I'm having a bit of trouble with this too. The optimized for productivity really looks like a last minute addition, so hopefully they'll have something of a bit more refined uh, once systems launch. Speaking of new systems, some of the first that will have Whiskey Lake processors are Dell's upcoming Inspiron 7000 and 5000 series 2-in-1s. They have ultra-slim aluminum frames, nearly 16-hour battery life, compatibility with Amazon's Alexa and Optane support. Uh, it seems like this could be a perfect fit for enhanced connectivity options offered by Intel's Evolved platform. And personally, I've never found a use for convertible notebooks, but with more and more features being packed into them, I'm sure some people will find these useful. So there you guys have it. I know I spent a lot of time setting up the stage, explaining to you, you know, what Whiskey Lake, what these new Whiskey Lake CPUs are, because you know Intel's current lineup is super massive, and I'm hoping that this video sort of helped uh, eased that and helped you process some of this new information. Uh, at least that's what I hope, and you can definitely let me know in the comments down below. But uh, like I said throughout this video. Uh, I think Intel's current notebook lineup is way too confusing for a lot of people especially because of their sensible or I guess their meaningless naming scheme with their existing model parts and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't make any sense. I feel like you know offering 20 or, 20 or more processors at the same time in the notebook space just make customers, uh, it just, um, 
it just makes it difficult for customers to go out and pick and choose what they really need. What's also obvious is that Intel's really struggling to remain relevant and launch new technologies. Uh, there have been long delays with their upcoming 10 nanometer Cannon Lake architecture, and that means features that would normally be rolled into larger revisions are being drip fed uh, to users in minor changes like those in Whiskey Lake and uh, even KB Lake R CPUs. And to make matters even worse, slightly older parts can't be discontinued because many of the partners have only just begun implementing the KB Lake R U series processors into their uh, new notebook designs. So with all of this being said, I'm really excited to see what Whiskey Lake has uh, lined up for the future. And I'm really curious to test out uh, these new CPUs and see what they offer for the average consumer. I'm more particularly interested in testing the battery life because you know, if you can have a notebook that can last for a day, perhaps a day and a half, uh, with just casual use, that will be kind of fantastic. And for someone like, um, you know, perhaps a student who just takes notes uh, uh, for classes, I think uh, it's certainly going to be a welcoming addition. But again, Intel offering 20 more processors and notebooks these days is just it's insane. So I want to hear your thoughts on Intel's new Whiskey Lake offerings. What do you guys think about it? And of course, definitely let me know what you guys think about the code name Whiskey Lake because it just uh, it to me it just sounds like um, Intel's just having fun uh, naming all of these things uh, with different things because we have Coffee Lake now we have Whiskey Lake. So what's next? I have no idea. Anyways, I'm Ebro with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our new Boot Sequence channel for the latest tech news and rumors. And you can also watch some relevant content over here. I'm signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next one.